Great. So welcome, everyone. Um, on behalf of the Fullerton College Department of Political Science and my team of democracy-minded volunteers um, who are committed to providing voters with information and education about their ballot, this is the candidate forum for the Orange County Board of Education that will uh, be concluded on the March 5th election results. My name is Jody Bulma. I'll be your moderator for the evening. I'm a professor of political science at Fullerton College. And I believe strongly uh, in forums like this to provide nonpartisan political information that encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in their government and introduces them to the people behind the names on their ballot. Uh, we ask the audience to be respectful and we've taken away your power to not be respectful. Uh, but we appreciate your participation and hopefully when we have the video uh, live on YouTube, you will share it with your friends, family, uh, uh, and committed voters. Our goal for tonight is the same as every candidate forum, which is to allow the candidates to communicate with the voters. Um, these candidates are, are running for the Board of Education of Orange County, uh, and we have the community uh, submit questions that they will answer. So those have all been submitted online prior to this. I have not uh, selected the questions. They were selected by volunteers who um, were part of my team. So before the event, we had the candidates draw slots for the order of answering and we'll rotate that order with each question. In addition, there are six candidates for these three seats. And uh, as you will soon realize, there are three participants who are here uh, and the other three candidates for these offices submitted statements to be read on their behalf. And so my uh, wonderful colleague, Jan Urban, will read all of the candidate statements. All of the opening statements will follow the same rules, whether they're being read from a statement or participating live, which is that each candidate has two minutes um, to, uh, to, to give their opening statement, whatever they would like to tell you about themselves, their campaign and why they're running. Uh, I will take uh, the time from our wonderful timekeeper, Karen Bender, who will keep time for us and keep us all on track. Once those opening statements are done, uh, only the three candidates who are participating tonight will be answering questions. And so we'll rotate the order so everybody gets a chance to go first. Uh, and we will take all of the questions uh, and each candidate will have one minute to answer. So again, Karen will keep us on time. I will, when I see that stop sign up for the time being done, um, ask the candidate to finish the sentence, not the paragraph. Uh, and, and if they don't, I will remind them again. So just a little bit of background. Uh, these five geographic districts uh, for the Board of Education um, three of those districts are on the March ballot this year, and the other two districts were elected in 2022 and so won't appear on anyone's ballot until 2026. So if you live in District 1, 3, or 4, you'll see those races on your ballot, and you'll see just one depending on which uh, district you live in. If you live in District 2 or 5, you have to wait until 2026 to vote for your Board of Education seat. However, as we all know, um, regardless of who your individual geographic representative is, the board together makes decision for the entire County of Orange Department of Education. So it's very important regardless of whether or not your particular candidate is on the ballot. Um, and so I want to thank each of the candidates for being here tonight as well um, as running for office. I think in the light of our polarized politics, it's important for all of us to remember how important um, that these candidates are willing to volunteer to put themselves in the public sphere, where often candidates are attacked or criticized, um, and, and that these individuals across the spectrum um, understand that and run anyway. And uh, sometimes at great personal costs in terms of fundraising and time spent at events and forums like these, uh, and then once elected in, in, in doing the job and making the best decisions possible. And um, so I, I just wanna thank everyone, um, participants uh, and candidates worldwide uh, for, for being a part of our democracy. So um, let's get started with our candidate statements. Um, Jan, I will have you 
Uh, let me just switch one back. One question. One question, Jody. Yes. Um, um, the timer, Karen, is not yes. visible on my screen. Oh, do we need to make her a co-host? Nope, she's there. I think she just turned off her camera while I was talking. So oh. can you see Karen now? Uh, no, I cannot. Okay. Well, I will call time for you. Thank you. So <laughs> you can go ahead and start. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So in the order that the, um, the candidate statements will be read, Tim Shaw will have his statement read first, and then Ken Williams, and then George Valdez. And so, Jan, if you will start with the candidate statement from uh, Tim Shaw. I will have an introductory sentence before the timer should begin. Great. Okay. This is a two-minute statement of candidate for Orange County Board of Education Trustee District Tim Shaw. I have had the privilege of serving as the fourth district trustee since 2020, and this year I am president of Orange County Board of Education. My wife and I have six sons, all of whom are attending public schools. I have been an adjunct professor of political science for nearly 20 years. I was previously a city councilman and mayor of La Habra. I was the chairman of the Orange County Transportation Authority, and I was on the Orange County Sanitation District Board of Directors. My leadership experiences are valuable in helping the Orange County Department of Education succeed. In my campaign, we are emphasizing academic excellence by concentrating on core subjects such as reading, writing, and math, not on social experimentation. I also support giving students and parents educational options, including charter schools. Critics of the board accuse us of wasting taxpayer dollars on lawsuits. What they won't acknowledge is the enormous budget reserve we have. The Orange County Register ed editorial page endorsed us for re-election by writing, quote, the Orange County Department of Education is on solid financial footing, end quote. Regrettably, the board's desire to hire a general counsel of their choosing was fought by the superintendent, and this disagreement led to litigation where the board prevailed. The board also believes we should have an active role in the budget process. We should not merely serve as a rubber stamp for the superintendent's budget preferences. This disagreement has also led to unfortunate litigation. So that's and the these time are forced on the board of superintendents' unwillingness to recognize the board of education as a governing partner. But Thank I you. am hoping- That's the time, Jam. So thank you. Okay, and now the candidate statement for Ken Williams. Oh, you're muted, Jim. You're muted. You have to unmute. There we go. Okay. So now start for Ken Williams. Dr. Ken Williams has fought his entire career for the right of parents to direct the upbringing and instill the values of their family and faith in their children. He will always fight for the innocence of children and the right of parents to be involved and informed on every school-related issue. Children belong to parents, not the state. These are fundamental, self-evident truths. Okay, thank and you. And the statement for George Valdez. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity to submit this candidate statement as part of your candidates forum. I regret that your event conflicted with a campaign-related event of my own that I could not alter. 
the voters of District 1 will have a very clear choice in their Orange County Board of Education vote on March 5th. I have made very clear in my campaign mailings and social media that I consider myself the parents' choice candidate in this election. My record on the Orange County Board of Education has been clear. I have voted to open new charter schools, authored the Parents' Bill of Rights at the OCBE, and have, in general, supported policies that keep parents notified and put them in control of their child's education. To the contrary, my opponent has made it clear in her social media that she is the teacher's choice candidate. And I thank her for that. Because in California's darkest hour coming out of COVID, when millions of children and parents were trying to get back to in-person learning, the California Teachers Association demanded the defunding of police, universal health care, and the closure of every charter school in California. Those actions were appalling to me at the time as a parent with school-aged children of my own. So when the CTA contacted me in November of 2023, asking if I wanted to interview with them for their endorsement, I respectfully declined the interview because it is abundantly clear that they do not put parents first and instead have other political motives of their own. District 1 has peculiar, particular challenges that I have witnessed firsthand since so I took a to seat on the board. Thank you. So that concludes our candidate statements from, oh, my clock is going off. Um, so now we'll move to the order of our participating. Uh, candidates, thank you very much, Jan, for reading those. Um, first, we will have uh, Beatrice Mendoza. And so you'll have two minutes. Great, thank you. Uh, first of all, I wanna thank everyone for being here. Uh, I want those of you that are on Zoom uh, to know that uh, what makes me different from my opponent is that uh, I am a local. I have lived and worked in the district where I'm running which includes uh, Central Orange County, in particular, Santa Ana, Anaheim, Tustin, 6% of Garden Grove and 11% uh, of Orange. Uh, I also lived in Orange for about 11 years. I know my district very well. I am a former uh, planning commissioner, also a um, member of the general uh, master plan uh, group that helped revise the city of Santa Ana's master plan. Uh, and also my experience uh, having worked with three elected officials as their education policy expert and advisor, working very closely with the schools and all the cities that I mentioned, uh, and also being a former CEO of the YWCA, a young women's Christian association, which included being the executive director of the youth employment services, assisting um, youth with uh, helping um, helping them finding jobs, revising their resumes, et cetera. I have worked with uh, other nonprofits that involves helping my community. So I didn't just start helping my community. I have been helping my community. I've been working with my community. I also have been involved with LULAC on and off for 20 years. We believe in education for all. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're documented or not documented. I will continue to fight for students and their education attainment. Also been working with parents. Uh, so if my opponent talks about parents, I have been working with parents as an executive board member of my kids PTA for over 15 years. So I have what it takes to get into the job and I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Second, we have Nancy Watkins with her opening statement. You have two minutes, Nancy. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dr. Nancy Watkins, and I am an educator to my core. I spent the bulk of my career as a high school teacher in our public schools and for 30 years taught government and economics to high school juniors and seniors. I retired after 30 years in public education. I say I failed at retirement because I was then hired at Cal State Fullerton, where I'm an associate professor of educational leadership and policy, as well 
well as the director of the doctoral program, preparing the next generation of educational leaders. I chose to run for this board because I saw a lack of attention to the students within the direct jurisdiction of the board. In fact, the candidate statements tonight discussed the budget, parents' rights, charter schools, and anti-teacher sentiments that do not reflect not one mention of the students under the direct jurisdiction of the board. These are the most vulnerable children in Orange County. They are in juvenile hall. They are part of the alternative education program in access, and they're part of the special needs program. As a trustee on the Orange County Board of Education, I hope to refocus this board, practice good governance, stop the waste of taxpayers' money. Just because there's a sound budget does not mean that the money is being spent wisely. And ensure that the students under the care of the board have access to quality information and education. I have found it to be critical that we become allies in education because public education and our schools are the cornerstone of our democracy. Paying attention to this race, this board in this election is critical for the future of education in Orange County. I am honored to be here tonight to hear your questions and respond. And I am excited about the possibility that we can flip the Orange County Board of Education with the three candidates who chose to be here tonight and listen to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dana Johnson, two minutes for your opening statement. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for being here to support public education. I'm David Johnson, a candidate for uh, District 4 of the Orange County Board of Education. As a former university vice president, school board president, and concerned uh, father, I am running to bring parents' voice to the Orange County Board of Education. Uh, Tim Shaw, the incumbent, has abandoned the focus on our most vulnerable students, as Nancy was speaking to, by squandering millions of dollars on taxpayer uh, lawsuits and lawyers, uh, funding that should have been spent in the classrooms. The incumbent presides over out-of-control meetings, inserts dangerous politics into our schools, and consistently shuts out the concerns of parents and teachers. These actions destroy public education. The incumbent says that he is for local control, yet is he, he's overturned the decisions of our local control districts over 85% of the time. He says he is keeping political culture chaos out of our schools, yet he has voted to spend millions of taxpayer dollars on frivolous political lawsuits and lawyers and has promoted the radical chaos at this board and a few other radicalized boards. These lawsuits, were to uh, fight the OC committee, which is supposed to create the maps for elections, but they sued so that they could have uh, boundaries that fit themselves better for their elections. They have sued to have their own attorney so that they could hide expenditures for lobbyists and marketeers. And they've sued our California governor. They sued our California superintendent. They sued our Orange County superintendent. And when he was out on medical leave, they taunted our administration, one incumbent in particular, saying, is he dead? How do you know he's not dead? This, these are the sentiments that you can see from some of our incumbents. But you could count on me as your Orange County Board Trustee to stop the chaos, restore funding to the classrooms. I will ensure that all parents have a voice, that all diverse perspectives are heard, and to put our students first. That's time. Oh. Perfectly timed, thank you. So um, I appreciate everyone's opening statement. We now move into uh, the part of our forum where we are asking questions that were sent in online by concerned citizens, people who are interested, and hopefully some of you will hear your questions. I had a team who um, sorted those questions, combined like questions for clarity, um, and if we don't get to your question, I'm sorry, uh, but just uh, that will be a, an issue of time because I have all of the questions before me. Uh, and we will go in rotating order so that each candidate will have a chance to go first and each candidate will have one minute to answer each of the questions we ask from here on out. So Nancy Watkins will take the first chance to answer our first question. And the question is, what do you think the role of the Board of Education in Orange County should be? And one minute. 
Thank you. So the actual four functions of the Orange County Board of Education include approving the LCAP measures, the local control accountability plans for local districts. They include hearing charter school appeals. They include uh, reviewing cases of expulsion and suspensions from districts and oversight for the Orange County Department of Education. What we have seen though is a wading into culture wars where the uh, my opponent, for example, a 28 year incumbent proposed an instructional materials censorship and ban. In addition, there have been other culture wars uh, related to parental right notifications and opting out of required curriculum from the state of California. The function of this board is to serve as good governors over the county and take care of the vulnerable children within their jurisdiction. And it has drifted away from its uh, required functions and created partisan ideology. Thank you. So each of you will have the opportunity to answer the same question. So David Johnson, your turn to answer. What do you think the role of the Board of Education in Orange County should be? Well, it should be all four points that Nancy uh, talked about, the LCAP, the charter schools, the expulsions and the oversight of the most vulnerable students. I'd like to talk about two of those, the most vulnerable students. Those are students that cannot attend any of the 32 other K through high school uh, districts. Uh, there's 28 of those and there's four more that are for college, a total of 32. What this board has done is focused on the charter school appeals. That's what they're focused on. And they've turned overturned 85% of the local control if a local school district said that they didn't want a charter school for certain reasonable log logical reasons. So I, I don't understand how they could say that they're for local control when clearly they are not. There is a reason for charter schools. Charter schools are supposed to be um, designed as incubators of great ideas that were unique and collaborative with their districts. And we have some charter schools that fit that. We have some charter schools that are healthy, but we also have charter schools that are going around that. And that's what we need to stop. We need to bring focus also back to these most vulnerable students. Thank you. Beatriz Mendoza, your chance to answer. What do you think the role of the Board of Education in Orange County should be? Sorry about that. Um, I think that they uh, definitely need to put the students first and uh, they definitely have not been doing that uh, these last few years. And I think uh, Nancy and uh, David also mentioned, uh, you know, they're pushing ideology that should not be pushed into our schools and children. And I think that um, each member should uh, reevaluate their district and see what are the needs of the students and what is going on and, and what they're creating is uh, they're creating uh, tension and bringing uh, federal policies into the uh, county board of ed and it's creating a lot of chaos. And as David Johnson mentioned, you know, we have to um, make sure that we uh, provide an education for all, not just certain students, but uh, students that are incarcerated, students that are uh, on, uh, dis uh, on disability or students that uh, don't have the same opportunities. We have to provide the same opportunities as well as providing apprenticeship programs to the students in the district. Thank you. So for our second question, um, David, you'll start first in answering and we'll rotate through. So question number two, what changes, if any, do you want to make in education as an elected member of the board? Well, changes in education. Uh, I think that we need to place the focus back, back on the most vulnerable students and, and ask the Department of Education, the parents, the students, the stakeholders, what can we do to help you? This current board left the California School Boards Association. They don't receive that guidance anymore. I learned from the CSBA that when you focus on students every single month, those uh, boards that do that well outperform the school districts that don't. That's why as president over at Westminster School District, I made sure that every single month we focused on student outcomes, both academic and be behavioral, um, mental health, anything that we could do to support students has to be brought back to the forefront, not this political radicalism. That's what needs to change and everything else will, will trickle down from that. Thank you. Beatrice, your opportunity to answer, what changes, if any, do you want to make in education as an elected member of the board? 
Um, well, you know, I want to mention something that my opponent said when he talked about um, some of the uh, things that were going on during COVID. You know, I, I think that we have already um, learned a lot from what services the students need. And I think that uh, one of the changes that I would make is definitely provide uh, more opportunities for students uh, with the uh, mental health services. I think uh, that we definitely need to make sure that they know that it's available. And also, um, we needed to make sure that we um, expose them to a 21st century curriculum that, again, just keep, keep like David Johnson said, just keeping the focus uh, on the students so that they can be uh, well prepared for, for the 21st century. Thank you. Nancy Watkins, your opportunity to answer that same question. What changes, if any, do you want to make in education as an elected member of the board? So the first thing that came to my mind is a famous quote that says, the only constant is change. And I think of change in, in any type of a dynamic environment as something that requires coalition building and opportunities to hear from constituents. So David and B mentioned this, that there is an opportunity to listen to the students and the families and the community, uh, the teachers who are already working with the kids at the county level, and particularly the outstanding members of the Orange County County Department of Education to learn more about what the needs are for the county level education. Education in general has had lots of challenges over the last several year, years, you know, especially after the pandemic. And we need to continue to work as a community to decide what the best educational approaches are to meet the needs of all students. Thank you. Our third question, we'll start with Beatrice Mendoza answering first. Our local school boards are facing multiple crises in education. What do you see the role of the Orange County Board of Education in helping our schools deal with these issues? Uh, great, thank you. I think that um, in the time that I have uh, been working with some of these uh, uh, schools and school districts, um, there is a disconnect between the Orange County um, board, current board with the uh, local districts. You know, I've never uh, seen a meeting that has taken place. And um, like Nancy was saying, you know, we, there needs to be more collaboration. For example, um, like the cities that are working together, um, we saw, we just saw a recent city that the city of Santa Ana had with the uh, Rancho Santiago Community College District. So I think we need to bring in more players to make sure that, that we are providing the curriculum, that we are providing the mental services for the students. Um, so again, like Nancy said, we have to make sure that uh, we give the local school boards uh, control, even if it includes they don't them not wanting a charter school. You know, we have to really listen to the local school boards rather, you know, taking it all to the county and again, just passing another school that, uh, you know, might not be to the best interest of the, um, the cities. Thank you. Nancy Watkins, your opportunity to answer. Our local school boards are facing multiple crises in education. What do you see the role of the Orange County Board of Education in helping our schools deal with these issues? And there's so much to unpack in that when we say that there are multiple crises, because what we are, I believe we are seeing is a very calculated attack on the foundation of public education. We have seen at several local districts, Orange Unified, Temecula Valley, Chino Valley, Placentia Yorba Linda, a, a very direct attack against educators and against the public education system. Uh, the crises are a result of a very small group of well-funded reactionaries that are pushing a personal agenda that involved curriculum censorship, involves book bans, and they keep trying out different terms and co-opting those terms to um, scare parents and use fear mongering. The second thing is related to charter schools. The Orange County Board of Education should work in partnership with districts when charter schools are up for appeal. But I agree that local control, a local district deciding it wants to open a charter should be their jurisdiction and not the county's. Thank you. David Johnson, your opportunity to answer the question. Our local school boards are facing multiple crises in education. What do you see the role of the Orange County Board of Education in helping our schools deal with these issues? Well, first of all, ditto. What, what uh, was just answered, I, I, I agree with. Um, you know, when you go through the approval at a local control of why a, a charter school should be approved or disapproved, that there's guidelines for that. And the local trustees have, have followed those. When I was at Westminster about five years ago, 
uh, a charter school presented and just did a lousy job. They weren't prepared with all, at least 50% of their questions were just uh, completely unprepared. And um, they got denied. And then when I, I followed the fella and I said, hey, it felt like you were kind of unprepared for those. Was, was, was something wrong? Or he says, oh, no, I don't really care. Because when I go to the Orange County Board of Education, they're just going to rubber stamp this. And that's what's happening. And we need to stop that ridiculousness. And we need to stop the policies to where, you know, we, we know that one of these incumbents went to a prayer vigil during a press conference on school board property. They are bringing the chaos that is creating the problems at Thank these other you. Areas. Thank you. So the next question goes to Nancy Watkins as the first to answer. The current school board members have been endorsed by the Orange County Register for maintaining a balanced budget. What are your top spending priorities and how could those be supported while still maintaining a balanced budget? I do also wanna just start with saying one minute is not enough to give the full answer. It's like so much pressure when you don't know what the question's gonna be. Anyway, I don't wanna waste any more time on that. Uh, the <laughs> challenge of the budget is because the budget is developed by the Orange County Department of Education. And there are certain things because the county board does serve as a pass-through agency for a lot of funds. The board's decisions about budget are very limited. Uh, so it's the budget is not the highest priority. It's one of the reasons I'm concerned about the 10 million dollars that has been spent in the last five years on lawsuits is because there is no board budget, but that's $10 million of money that could have been spent for academic programs, for students, for professional development that was wasted suing the governor, suing the county superintendent, suing the state, uh, state superintendent of public instruction. So Budget priorities for me are first to stop the frivolous spending and to learn about the Orange County Department of Ed's priorities and approve and work with them on the budget. Thank you. David Johnson, the same question. The current school board members have been endorsed by the Orange County Register for maintaining a balanced budget. What are your top spending priorities and how could those be supported while still maintaining a balanced budget? Westminster School District has the highest rating possible for a, a balanced budget that is doing well with reserves. And yet the Orange County Register said, well, we're 120 some million dollars in the red for UNP and the Orange County Board is, is uh, in the black by millions, hundreds of millions. What is a UNP? None of you ever heard of it before. What that is, is not on the balance sheet. What that is, is liabilities based on bonds to pay for air conditioning and retirement benefits for our teachers and staff that have retired. They used a very obscure calculation to try to get around the fact that only 10% or less of their budget is actually discretionary for that board to use, and they used it on these political lawsuits instead. It was very misleading and disingenuous. Thank you, Beatrice Mendoza. The current school board members have been endorsed by the Orange County Register for maintaining a balanced budget. What are your top spending priorities and how could those be supported while still maintaining a balanced budget? Great. Uh, so I'm going to kind of go um, along with what uh, David Johnson and Nancy, Dr. Nancy Watkins said. You know, what I think we need uh, on the board is uh, we need a balance. You know, when you have a 5-0 vote uh, without any um, questions on where the money is being spent, uh, that has to be questionable, and the public needs to know that uh, there is always a 5-0 vote when it's to support um, uh, their own council to travel, and uh, the people are, uh, the, the candidate, I mean, the trustees are not questioning these fees, you know, like the most recent uh, travel fees that they had for 12300 from a, a trip to uh, Oakland. You know, we have to make sure that um, we are using the people's, the taxpayers' money wisely. And, and when we're not, they're not questioning these uh, fees, then there's a problem. So I think we need a big balance. Uh, we need to put money and priorities back into the students and classrooms. And mental health is a big part of uh, my platform. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is related to the budget. So uh, David Johnson, you'll have the opportunity to answer first. With projected declining budgets from the state of California, where would you prioritize, cut, cut, where would you cut spending to maintain a balanced budget? So uh, according to the numbers coming out from our governor, 
we're actually going to have about a little bit less than a 1% increase in funding for schools. That's called COLA, a cost of living adjustment. And so uh, according to projections of the state, yes, we're gonna be many tens of million, uh, billions of dollars shortfall, but in education, our COLA is actually going to increase slightly. So where, so it's, you know, the question is it makes the assumption that we will have to make drastic cuts. Um, according to the numbers we're getting, that's not the case. I, I will only move on if you're done with your time, but. Yeah, uh, I'll, okay. I'll give my Thank time you. to the next person. Thank you. Because, well, because I think that the question terrible, makes an assumption. We'll get it at the end. It's not, the question makes an assumption that, sure. yeah, the state's at a, going to be in a deficit, but they're going to fund education with a small increase. Thank you. Beatrice Mendoza, with projected declining budgets from the state, where would you cut spending to maintain a balanced budget? Um, well, you know, that is a um, tough question. It's an important question. Um, what I want to say about this is that you have to have the right people in there to be able to work with um, government uh, offices. And I think I have the experience with working with uh, some of these uh agencies uh, that, like for example, uh, county agencies where we need to um, not cut this, the money, but I think what I wanna say is we, we need to provide more funding, right? Uh, especially in, in Orange County, I, I, I don't wanna say too much about this, but I was working for a, a county supervisor and I'm get, again, I'm gonna go to my district, you know, in district or the district where I'm running, district one, which includes Santa Ana, uh, Anaheim and Tustin. You know, we have to look at what are the needs of, of the students and what do they need uh, to perform? Uh, because we have a lot of, uh, we have lack of uh, food, we have housing insecurity. So I think that, um, you know, we need to work with the governor, the governor's office to make sure that um, we are providing um, these resources to students rather than uh, cutting the um, Thank funds. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy Watkins, with projected declining budgets from the state, where would you cut spending to maintain a balanced budget? So I think it's first it's just an important note, and this is not something that the county level can solve. It's something for the state and federal government is really looking at the funding models around education, because the bottom line is, is we want to ensure that our schools, all of our educational system is well funded. And we know that there are some challenges that exist in that. Um, but I go down to uh, any budget making should be based on the vision, the priorities and the values of the board and the Department of Education, just like a family that is creating a budget, we have to make a decision about what's cast, what does the money have to be spent on, and then look at what else is there to go. So we have to look at our values, our core, our core values, and our priorities. And I will point out again that the current board in December gave $49,780 to a law firm. In January, that number was over $30,000 a month, $10 million over the last five years. That should concern taxpayers and the way we balance is to stop those legal fees. Thank you. The next question will go to Beatrice Mendoza first. Um, what do you believe should guide the Orange County Board of Education in regards to charter school applications that have been rejected by the homeschool district? Follow up, should charter schools be held to the same regulatory processes at public schools? So I'm just going to say that again. What do you believe should guide the Orange County Board of Education in regards to charter school applications that have been rejected by the homeschool district? Should charter schools be held to the same regulatory processes as public schools? Okay, I'm not sure if I'm understanding the question correctly, but what should guide the board in regards to charter school applications? That have been um, well, rejected um, by the homeschool district that have been rejected. Okay, well, um, you know, I think again, um, at least in, in the community uh, where I've been working, there is a lot of misinformation, especially with some of the um, Spanish speaking uh, parents where I think they're being misinformed about, uh, first of all, uh, what public education is um, because they have been misled by some of these um, 
charter school uh, folks coming into our community saying, hey, you know, we have this for you, for your students. Uh, the public school is failing your students when, um, you know, they really don't have the statistics to prove that um, that, that is the case. So in terms of the guide, um, you know, I, in the city of Santa Ana, we do a lot of focus groups. I think that we need to come up with with a uh, strategy so that we can make sure that we have these focus groups in the community so that it can be our guide into um, uh, these charter schools that are being denied. Because again, we got to give back the control to the local districts. Thank you. Nancy Watkins. So thank you. So I, you know, I think that it's very important that parents have choices to find the best educational fit for their child. So parents do have choices. And if a local district chooses to open up a charter school within its district boundaries, it's usually done as a way of innovating and finding a, or meeting a community need. There are also several very successful county charter schools. I look at the Orange County High School for Performing Arts as an example, um, and then successful charter schools within districts like El Rancho Middle School and the Orange Unified School District. But one of the things that is important to note is that those charter schools that are in partnership with districts do have oversight from the locally elected board. The charter schools that are approved on appeal by the county board are run by charter management organizations without proper oversight. Currently, that oversight is ignoring, what little oversight exists is ignoring charter organizations that are not successful financially and allowing them to continue. And right now, charters on appeal get a 5-0 vote with absolutely no discussion, despite the department's recommendations. Thank you. Dana Johnson, the same question. What do you believe should guide the Orange County Board of Education in regards to charter school applications that have been rejected by the homeschool district? Should charter schools be held to the same regulatory processes as public schools? Uh, two things, the law and also their local representation who knows their community better than five people of the exact same ideology in uh, at, at the Orange County Board of Education. So first of all, they have to follow the law. They have to meet the intent of the law. And once that checklist is done, then the local trustees who know their community best will make it happen for them. Remember, they're supposed to be incubators of great ideas that were supposed to be collaborative with their district. And as Nancy pointed out, there are many charter schools that do a great job at that. And I, I, you know, we also want to support that. We also want to support the Orange County Department of Education in their job to help those that need corrections when they are defaulting financially, when they are not meeting their obligations by law. And we need proper trustees to give them the support they need to do their job to help these charter schools. We need to stop the rubber stamping. Thank you. The next question will start with Nancy Watkins. And the question is, there's a lot of fear and anger displayed through public comments at school board meetings. What do you think the public needs to know to feel confident that our school boards are in capable hands? So we are seeing a movement nationally of agitators purposefully disrupting school board meetings. And so much of that disruption is based on fear, intimidation. In our local, in Orange County, we can identify the same people attending each of the local school board meetings and offering comments, and at times violent threats against school board members. As a member of just the audience, just as a constituent, inside the boardroom at the Orange County Board of Education. I've been verbally attacked. I've been personally attacked. And I, lies and misinformation continue to kind of be the, the norm. Um, how can we get rid or you know feel confident in our school boards? Good governance, not enga engaging into the conflict and chaos and knowing when to focus on the agenda at hand and not bring in personal agendas and call your friends to have them come to the board to be purposefully disruptive. Thank you. David Johnson, same question. There's a lot of fear and anger displayed at public comments at school board meetings. What do you think the public needs to know to feel confident that our school boards are in capable hands? I think they need to feel confident in the trustee in which trust is the root word of that trustee. When we were uh, at, at Westminster, 
uh, determining what we needed to do for COVID when that break uh, pandemic came out, I held and I publicly posted this on social media all over the place, meetings on Zoom in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese, three different sessions so that everyone could attend, far right, far left, anyone else. And I was very collaborative. I was very open. I, I did my best not to win. I Instead, I did my best to understand and then collaborate and come to consensus. And when people understand that they have a trustee who cares about their perspective, no matter what it is, then that starts to come down. And that's why you no longer see any of that problem at my school district for the last three years. Thank you. Beatrice Mendoza, there's a lot of fear and anger displayed at public comments at school board meetings. What do you think the public needs to know to feel confident that our school boards are in capable hands? Well, rather than uh, what do they need to know, I think they need to go vote because when you have a 5-0 majority, um, you know, you, you you could just tell, I mean, uh, the audience that currently attends, uh, they feel protected um, by, you know, their bullying tactics because there is a 5-0 majority that won't put an end to their bullying um, at the dais. So I think that's what the public needs to know. They need to know that we need to um, flip the board. We have to, uh, again, just put a balance on the board. Uh, they uh, there is a lot of fear in the community. My daughter goes to Orange High School, and I recently saw a video of uh, one of the, uh, the the trustees, current trustees, allies. They're yelling at students. You know, the I want the public to know that once we are elected, we are going to listen to them, and we are going to put an end to the bullying that happens on the dais. Thank you. The next question will start with David Johnson. Um, as you've campaigned and met with concerned voters, what do you think the biggest concerns are from the electorate? Well, I know that uh, what we're seeing mirrors some of what we're seeing nationally. One, that they do trust our teachers and what our teachers have to say. So to be endorsed by over 20,000 plus teachers, I take pride in that. Um, they're concerned about safe schools. And in Westminster, We've improved our safe schools in at least six or seven ways in the last three years. They're very significantly. The other thing they want is to keep these culture conflicts out of our school districts, out of our schools. We need to focus on students and be nonpartisan, understand and, and try to come to consensus in the needs for everyone, every student, charter school students, special education students, access students, everyone that needs proper oversight with this Orange County Board of Education. Thank you. Beatrice Mendoza, as you've campaigned and met with concerned voters, what do you think the biggest concerns are from the electorate? Um, so again, I think uh, David Johnson mentioned it that, you know, um, we have to make sure that we uh, let the parents and students know that their children will be protected with us. And that's why we need a balance on the board. We can't have these uh, trustees in school districts that agree with, um, you know, outing students when they decide, um, you know, they want to um, be a, a particular um, surname. I mean, they, they need to know that um, the, the electorate is telling me, you know, how do we uh, make sure that these students are succeeding? Well, we have to provide the right tools. Uh, one of them is mental health. And um, it's very important for the students to be able to feel safe at the schools. And I think that's what we got to do. We have to make sure that um, they, they are uh, informed of what's going on in the board so that the students uh, can feel protected and, and therefore uh, be successful. Thank you. And Nancy Watkins. Thank you. So I, I agree with what both my uh, colleagues have said is that it is not a good trend to be censoring instructional materials and banning books. And so what I hear from constituents is that they want to know that the teachers have the support and the resources to teach the students to read and write and do math and think so that they can thrive. And I have to emphasize how important it is to provide a safe school environment. And that Safety has to come both physically from outside violence, as well as emotionally with proper social emotional guidance. Now, parents are involved in schools, and I know it's very important for parents to feel that they 
can be involved. And that's enshrined in ed code and protected for parents' rights to work with the education system, the teachers and the school to ensure that their kids are meeting those goals and thriving. Bottom line is we want to know that teachers can do their job and teach the students and that the students have the opportunity to learn. Thank you. Thank you. And so that concludes our questions from the audience. And I apologize that we didn't get through all of them. There were so many good questions and I appreciate everyone who submitted them. I share the, the remaining questions with the candidates. They, they may want to um, address them separately, but um, we're, we're now uh, going to have one minute for each of the candidates to have a closing statement. Um, and we'll start with uh, Beatrice Mendoza. Yes, thank you so much um, to all of you for being here. That tells us a lot. It tells us that you care about our community. Um, I encourage you all to go to these meetings. Um, if you haven't, you will definitely uh, learn that we definitely need a change on the Orange County Board of Education. Uh, with my experience working in my community, uh, again, in particular, the district where I'm running, it's important that we elect someone that knows the community well. I have worked with uh, you know, of my neighbors, I work with parents, students, teachers, uh, especially being involved with the PTA and school site council. Um, I have been saying this around over and over, you know, I didn't just get started with working with my community. I've been doing this for over 20 years. And um, I think that this is the right time, guys, this is the right time to uh, bring back some sound um, to the board of balance and like uh, Dr. Nancy Watkins says all the time, you know, to make the the uh, school board meetings boring again, we have to and this is the right uh, time. So I think that I'm the right candidate in District 1, Santa Ana, Anaheim, and Tustin. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy Watkins. Thank you. So I am running against a 28 year incumbent who has never visited a single county school and who sent his own children all to private schools. It is a novel idea and it shouldn't be that somebody who knows a little bit about education, who served as a teacher, who has researched and written on education would serve on a school board to make great decisions for families and students. I'm running in area three to overturn Ken Williams in his, after 28 years, stop the career politician and let education be the priority. Thank you, David Johnson. So I'm an experienced trustee. I am also a management consultant that loves to dig into root causes and collaborate with consensus. And I'm supported by teachers, staff, Republican clubs, Democrat clubs, many countless organizations that support public education, because this is not a me campaign. This is a we campaign, and we together will support all of our students for the Orange County Board of Education and support all of our school districts. We need to stop the chaos that they are bringing to our school boards. Thank you. So I really appreciate all of the time that people have taken uh, and, in answering the questions. Uh, and we will stop our recording and let people, um, I will let Christina end our forum. <laughs>